ですけど。<笑>
<laughs> and fixed it later on to New Hampshire. Uh, back in my old stomping grounds, Lewis from Evansville. All right, let's see. Uncle Bobby, good to have you here. Nashville, Tennessee, Betsy, good to have you here. Lake uh, Buckeye Lake, Ohio, Mike, good to have you here. Joe in Southern California, Bruce, uh, Florida, all sorts of folks today. <laughs> if you see this message, help, I'm having a problem. Playing slides and hammer-ons, happy to get to that. So can meet, great question. Uh, I will give you some exercises for sure. Will from Fairfax, good to have you here. Ooh, a little finger injury on James's part. Spent my time looking into mandocellos. Dangerous to have all the extra time. <laughs> yeah, mandocellos are fun. I don't own one yet, but maybe someday. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lewis says Ola Bella Reed has a bunch of mountain songs. High on a mountain. Um, <laughs> that's the only one I can think of right now. Um, yeah, uh, or Ivan Dirt is born on a mountain many years ago. Uh, hello from India. Good to have you here. Well, hello from uh, Portland, Oregon. That's where I'm, I'm based these days. Hope you're all having a great time. It's a beautiful day here. It's going to be like 80 degrees, bright and sunny. Looking forward to it. Got a busy day planned and happy to start it out hanging out with all you. If you're new here, the way these work is it's uh, pretty much just a time for anyone to ask questions that they might have working on music, mandolin, any of that, that sort of stuff. I'm happy to take requests as long as they're uh, in the public domain, so no uh, kind of covered pop songs or anything like that. And I gotta know them too, which is I usually bad about 50-50, <laughs> but um, it's fun to try anyway. But yeah, ultimately, I'm here for you, and so keep the questions rolling, keep the chat moving along. Let me know if this is your first time. I love seeing new names and new faces pop out, so... If this is your first live stream, definitely say hello in the chat. Thank you, Andy, for the super chat donation right off the bat. Really appreciate it from Minnesota. And uh, yeah, so thank you for anyone who supports me in any way. There's a bunch of ways. There's the super chat that Andy just put to use. There's uh, links in the description of this live stream to a Patreon page. There's a bunch of patrons in the, in the stream chatting it up. I love to see that. Um, there's also a PayPal donation link. Um, I've got merch. Uh, I just fixed my merch link. It wasn't working right, but now it should be working right. Uh, if you want a t-shirt or a hat or a mug or... Oh, I don't do hats actually yet. I'm working on hats. Let me know if you'd like a hat. <laughs> um, but not required by any way on any of these donations, but greatly appreciated. Helped me do these live streams and put out new lessons every single week. All right. So that go back to that question about hammer-ons slides, pull-offs, all that sort of stuff. Great question. It definitely takes some getting used to. So what I it's, it's kind of a balance of figuring out how can I, you know, get a nice clean sound out of the instrument and also at the same time use as little kind of muscle as possible because you can really overdo it and like play too hard. But if you play too soft, then it also doesn't get the greatest sound. I'm gonna to switch to a, a regular old mandolin here. Put the, the mandola down for a second. I hope this is in tune. Yeah, good enough. So, I've got some exercises on my website, mandolessons.com, uh, in the technique and fundamental section. I think they're in the under the left hand technique heading. Um, on hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides. Ultimately, uh, kind of what we're aiming for, let's use the D string as our string of choice for practicing some of this stuff. And just to get fingers down, we're gonna be hammering on from the second fret to the fourth fret, using our, starting with our pointer finger, moving to the middle finger. So it's gonna look like this. So that's the exercise. and. You'll notice that if you go too slow, if you put your finger down too slow, it mutes the string before you can get to the fret, and you don't get any hammer on. And it just cuts it off. So you need to have a certain, I think about it as, you know, if you boil a pot of water, 
like this big and then you got you know you you broke your kettle so you, you gotta pour right out of a pot into a into a mug you know you, you don't want to go too little or it'll dribble down the side and make a big mess and if you go too much you're gonna totally overdo it overfill the mug and make a mess again so you, you need, it's a certain feeling of like okay I know how much water is in this pot I really need to just like have the perfect amount of like confidence to really like oh, all right that's it that's the feeling uh, it takes some experience to sort of get used to doing that and it's the same idea with hammer-ons so doing our little practice here you need to have you know a nice maybe here's a good idea I've never, never tried this but like if you mute the strings with your right hand so you know you, maybe this is I don't know if you can hear that I'll get a little closer to the mic that's the sound of my finger hammering on. Just a little, like, so it's not this. And it's not this. You know, that's too much. You don't need to, that's sort of like the Happy Gilmore. People know that movie where he kind of runs at the, he's a learn to play golf. And he just like runs at the ball as hard as he can and like does like a run, running, run by swing and just hits it really far you don't need to do that um but you do need a certain amount of kind of pressure so yeah i mean you could use that to build up exercises just mute the string and really work on kind of getting that finger to to fire nice and confidently and that'll turn into And uh, you can practice it by letting that first note ring out longer. The longer that first note rings out, the harder it is to kind of get a clean second note. Because it already starts decaying. Um, so if you do it real quick, you get that nice strong note. If you let it ring out, you start to lose it from the decay. And in the middle, you get something like that. And then with pull-offs, same idea. You need to like give a little flick to your your ring finger to kind of pull the string from the side. So I'm kind of pulling down towards the floor. That's really overemphasized, but <laughs> you want to do that without actually bending the note. This little flick. It's like doing that. But starting with the note and then slides same idea um, you got to think about that kind of like big pot of water let's take a, a random two sets of notes now maybe that second uh, fourth fourth fret on your D string we're gonna slide to the seventh fret so that's our ending note starting note and we're gonna do this and again there it like depends on how much of that first note are you doing this or are you doing this? Both, you're gonna run into both um, all the time, so it's good to practice both. But you know, just, you need to take it out of context of any tune. And <laughs> I overshot it. And it's okay if you overshoot or undershoot, but then you just gotta give it a little more or a little less to really nail that move. <laughs> didn't quite hit it so you gotta practice ultimately and the more you can take it out of context and turn it into a little loop and a little um simple m movement uh the quicker you'll progress at kind of getting those things it's a lot of it's kind of confidence and having a, a little extra finger strength just to really be able to be nice and kind of uh usefully forceful you know you don't want to over you don't want to overdo anything but you do need a certain amount of kind of confidence and snap to your fingers to get a real clean hammer on or slide or pull off great question though thank you all right let's see oh barely 50 degrees there yeah, it's, it's it's not 80 yet but it's uh it was in the 50s this morning what is it now up-to-date Portland weather Saturday mornings uh, 60 degrees <laughs> so but it'll be it'll be hot by the afternoon for sure 
All right, Patricia, first time here from Noble, Oklahoma. Good to have you here. Patrick says, how's your 10-string treating you? It seems a little unwieldy, but what a great sound. It's fun. I really like it. I have a propensity for instruments with too many strings. Uh, that's why I've got like that 10-string uh, sittern and the 10-string mandolin. I'm currently working on different gauges for the, the mandola, the 10-string mandolin mandola. Um, I'm kind of a, a string tension obsessed human being so i'm always trying to figure out exactly what the right tensions are and i don't love the the kind of go-to tensions i'm thinking about i've always used ej75s or j75s the dario on this thing the ls i'm thinking about so this this is a 16 on the a and if you look at the string tension it's like uh from like g to e you, you can find string tension calculators or um Sometimes they have them on the string packages. The G is like 25 pounds, D is 25, A is like 20 pounds, and the E is 25 again. So I wanna try putting a 17. I think, don't quote me on these numbers. I have to actually look at them. But um, uh, I think straight up strings, the Simonoff strings, I think they do a 17 on their heavy set. I wanna try that next. Um, but I love kinda of a little extra heavy strings. And I've noticed on this one, I just put on kind of stock. Um, this is getting way in the weeds. Nobody asked for this, but it is what you get. Uh, so on this one, right now, it's running like 23, 25, 25. And then the A is like 29. It's really, really stiff. Um, and then the E is like 23 again. So I want to bump up the E a half gauge bump the A string down a gauge. I think the G and D are okay, and then bump up the C maybe two two gauges from a 53 to a 55. The problem is, not many people make a 55. <laughs> um, so I gotta, I gotta do some, some hunting. Anyway, that's a little string tension nerd out zone. But all, all in all, I love the 10 string. It's, it's very fun. It is a little unwieldy. It's a thicker neck. It's a whole, it's a longer scale length. So especially down on the, like the C string, I'm still getting used to like, you can probably hear it in, uh, when I was doing, let me go this way. <laughs> uh, when I was doing, uh, that sort of, when I've got that six and two, the C string. I kind of want to use my pinky, but I think if I just keep trying with the, the regular old ring finger, I'll, I'll get used to it eventually. Just got to spend more time with it, which is a beret. All right. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Glad people are into the hat idea. Ooh, American Banjo Museum is in Oklahoma. Damn, I want to go there too. I love banjos. All right, uh, so Kameet says, about my question, I used my middle finger on the A string and did a slide downward. The sound was like a slide, but it was kind of auto-tuned, if you know what I mean. It was not like a violin sl slide sound. Yeah, so downward slides are kind of a modern sound. Um, I don't know why, um, but it's got that sort of kind of like laser. And I don't know if that, I know what you mean with like the, the auto-tune. I don't know why that is. Maybe that, I don't know much about sort of like how auto-tune works, but maybe, maybe there's a little bit of that. It's got a, it's very, it's a modern sound for sure. Like hearing is very like, oh yeah, it's a slide up. But then you go, and it's like, oh, yow, pew. It's a little, it kind of sounds like a, a lightsaber or a laser gun or something. I don't know why that is. Maybe somebody in the chat knows. What's the history of the downward slide? Like you, you hear modern fiddle players, like Brittany Haas is a, one of my favorite fiddle players of all time. And she, to my mind, kind of like pioneered that downward kind of snappy slide sound. I can't begin to do it or replicate it on a mandolin, but it's got that sort of like, pow, it's, it's very percussive in a way that going up isn't. Oh, 
Oh, Fork It Deer. That's a great tune. If I can remember how it goes, I definitely will. Uh, do I have to change the action height for slides and pull-offs? Um, it, I think, to some extent can help. I would say, you know, try it for a while. If your action is really high, it will definitely uh, change the ability of you to be able to do slides. That's about where mine is. I don't know any numbers, but if yours looks about like that, um, you should be able to do it. I don't go for a super low action. In, you know, within a certain range, it's very much personal preference. Depends on how hard your right hand works. So I, I push the mandolin pretty hard with my right hand, so I like a slightly higher action so I don't get buzzing. Um, but yeah, you know, play around with it for sure. Forked Deer. If I can remember. Oh yeah, there it is. I've got a weird B part to Fork a Deer I don't know a whole lot about, but here's what I play anyway. Great suggestion. points to anyone who can tell me where my B parts from because it's I don't know I feel like it's a little uncommon and I have no idea where I got it that's kind of the, the only reason that the tune isn't on the website I don't think it's on the website anyway or if I if it is it probably has some like I don't know I'm hesitant about playing that tune because I really I don't know where the B part came from I just kind of I maybe just kind of made it up from hearing a bunch of different versions over the years but great suggestion I, I never think about that tune it's so good uh, so thank you, Kevin. Uh, Lewis says, I seem to find slides when I hit a wrong note and make a quick correction. And think, that sounded okay. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's a good way to, you know... <laughs> definitely a good way to, to turn a, 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 a one a one fret miss into a little bluesy moment. Some of your favorite tags or caboose endings in songs, especially jigs and reels. Uh, I feel like the, the, like the classic example is pretty much the end of Forked Deer. <laughs> That's my, one of my favorites. It's kind of the beginning of Fisher's Hornpipe, but also a great ending. So that's, these are all kind of ending on D. And then a D7, a little bluesy ending. Or, uh... 
And it's a little kind of another bluesy ending. And the jigs, I don't know, what, what do I do for kind of, I like the idea of caboose endings, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's see, jigs. <laughs> it's, yeah, so I actually, I tried to do a caboose ending when I played that tune at the very beginning, and I just went like, <laughs> uh, Which goes back into four, um, so that doesn't really work. But a jig ending. I'll give you something like that. Uh, jigs, I don't tend to do a whole lot of caboose endings on. Yeah, uh, it's a good question. I should work on some. But yeah, I, I mostly do them, it's kind of more of like a bluegrass, an old time thing to do uh, kind of those ending licks. And there's not a whole lot of jigs in those uh, styles, so maybe that's why my, my jig cabooses are lacking. Geroy from Belfast, good to have you back. Thanks for joining in. Have you ever played an instrument with torrified wood, thinking of buying some and having my luthier look at it for my pending mandolin? I like torrified wood. I've got this, uh, I've played, um, I've played some mand I've played some Collings mandolins with torrified tops that are great. It gives it a little extra, like, snap. I don't know exactly how to describe it. This is a Collings... Uh, like single O, one of their traditional series, and it has a baked Sitka top. Um, it's just, I, this is like, I love this guitar. Uh, the strings are super dead, but, uh, and I gotta get a more appropriate pick. guitar picker so much as a chord player but uh it's it's much snappier when the strings aren't like six months old um but i like yeah i like torrified i i don't that's a good question like if i were to get a custom instrument would i get it with a torrified top uh, it's hard to say i think it i like i certainly like the sound hard questions yeah <laughs> Um, but I, well, from what I've played, I've liked them. It would be a hard choice if I, I actually thought, well, I, I talked to Martin a little bit about getting a, an 018 custom shop and I, with a guitar, I did say I'd like the top. Uh, I didn't end up going through with it. I probably still will at some point, but I got too many projects going on. <laughs> um, but with a guitar, I think I would order Torrified. Mandolin, I just have less experience, so I don't know. It's also like maybe mandolin dependent. Like my Ellis is super dark sounding, which I love. So maybe a torrified top would maybe brighten it up and give it a little more snap, which could be nice. But also like the Smart ten string is super bright, um, which I love. Um, but then would I want to brighten it up more by a tor by a torrified top? I don't know. And maybe the torrification would do something different on a really bright instrument. And maybe it would just like give it a little more oomph or something. I don't know. I'm no expert on torrified. So for anyone who doesn't know, torrified wood is they bake. It's also called a baked top. And they they kind of kiln dry the top with some special and like UV uh, work on the top. So it, it gets extra dry and it sort of imitates how an instrument dries out 
uh, or like a vintage instrument. So, you know, a hundred year old guitar, the top is much drier than like your stock new um, guitar just because it's dried out over the years and that changes the sound. So that's what we're talking about. Oh, nice. Do you have any tips for playing along with folks in more slower songs and also how to play along with funk chords I can't play? So with slower stuff, you know, I would say open strings are your friend. You know, with, with slower songs, there's more space for you to be able to fill. You want to leave space, but um, you also, you know, in a bluegrass... Situ it, it's all so situation dependent you know if, if there's a whole bluegrass band with the guitar going and the bass is going boom 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 boom, boom you know doing the bass thing and then you, the mandolin is also going that's a lot of a lot of notes for a, a five piece band but if it's a slower song you know if you're going like uh if the song's going like this, you don't necessarily need to go. You know, the, the sort of very sparse chop doesn't fit in. So you need to figure out kind of what you like the sound of and what works best with the ensemble you're playing with. Um, but you know, I love open strings. Maybe a little tremolo. Um, and then what was the, there was a second after that question. Oh, funk, funky stuff. I would say, you know, with, with certain genres of music, just listen a lot and cover the strings with your left hand so you're not worrying about the chord, like the, the notes of the chord, and really just focus on that, uh, the, the percussive element of, you know, especially with funk. And then once you, you've got your right hand in a groove, I would say play like kind of minimalist chords, maybe just the bottom two sets of strings, G and D. Something like Wolfpack is a great funk band. Um, you know, listen to their stuff, and you, you hear all of like the guitar lines with like Corey Wong playing like super funky, and it's all in his left hand is just going wild, but his right hand's really like you know his left. He's got this awesome, super loose, open right hand where he's doing this. I can't begin to emulate it, but it's, it's not like his left hand is doing this while his right hand is doing this. You know, his left hand's pretty. That's, that I would say, you know, really work on your right hand and then be really minimalistic with your left hand because you have all this syncopation and funk going on with just the rhythm that if you're also playing really noty stuff, that, that adds a lot of information. And you can, anytime you get more complicated in one aspect of your playing, uh, try to get less complicated with the other and leave more space so you're not just like throwing especially in like ensemble situations if you're doing your own solo thing you got tons of space to fill but if you're in a five-piece band you gotta you gotta pull back a little bit and kind of pick a role yeah sierra is amazing at slides so clean uh hamanta says what is the right type of plectra for beginners I would say a great use of a little bit of money, you know, rather than spending like a lot of, if you're, if you have like a, a good workable mandolin um, and you haven't ex uh, kind of played around with different kinds of picks, a good use of like 10 American dollars or, you know, pro uh, maybe in India maybe, or 
Um, in any case, uh, just speaking of the U.S. because that's what I'm familiar with, um, you know, go to a music store, find, they usually just have like big boxes if you're, if you're close to a music store, they'll have like a big sample box of all the different picks. You can either try them there or just buy a handful, see what you like. Um, I like, and a lot of mandolin players like, uh, kind of large triangle, like this shape, and they're 1.5 millimeter thick. Um, so fairly thick in the world of instruments, but then, you know, when I'm playing tenor guitar, I like these little, um, kind of regular guitar shape. Point, point eight eight is what I use on tenor guitar, but also down to point six, depending on the material. So, you know, there's, there's so much different sound you can get. It's kind of the same thing as like picking strings. What kind of strings do you like? Heavy, medium, light, uh, what material? There's lots of choices. Um, and you can get a huge range of sounds using different picks and different strings on the same mandolin. You need to kind of, uh, figure out your, your, uh, what am I trying to say? You need to figure out what your variables are and then play with one at a time. You know, if you like say, okay, I like this, this pick. I'm going to try this pick on this mandolin with this set of strings. Then I'm going to try this pick on that mandolin with a different set of strings so many variables so you need to kind of get to know your your instrument um figure out and then just change one variable at a time so try different shapes different materials different thicknesses you don't need to go out and buy a bunch of like blue chips which are 40 dollar picks um but at the same time um you know just like buy a bunch of one dollar picks or like cheap picks and then if you find something you really like, like you find yourself gravitating towards the large triangle 1.5 millimeter, then you can get, like David Benedict, a great mandolin player, he's got a great YouTube channel and Patreon page. He did recently, so I've done a pick comparison video. You can find it on my channel or on mandolessons.com um, where I go through, you know, like different thicknesses and materials and shapes and all that. And then David did one of like eight different picks that are all this essentially this size and shape they're all big triangle they're all about 1.5 millimeter um so he he found that he's interested in this he, like he likes this shape so he went a deep dive into sort of like okay of all the it, the picks in this shape what do i like the best so he he did a comparison there so kind of figure out what you what shape you like what material you like what thickness you like and then you can start to experiment within that like okay wh wh what do i have for different opportunities in there it's to it is totally a personal preference <laughs> what can't sierra do yeah not much she's incredible yeah it is a little uh whatever that tune is uh fork of deer is a little whiskey before breakfasty as well cool well glad you're enjoying the tunes oh yeah 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 the fork of deer Forkadier is not on the site. Cool. Uh, good to know. Probably because I have no idea what the B part is. Advice for tremolo. Yes, I have a lesson on my website. Uh, it's in the technique and fundamental section. My website, mandolessons.com. Uh, links in the description. And I've got a bunch of different lessons, or a couple of lessons, I think, on at least on in techniques and fundamentals you know, under the right hand uh, heading. I've got some stuff on tremolo, but in general, you want to be nice and loose. You know, start out nice and slow. You want to be going down and up. You want the, this is when kind of having an angle to your pick. So not having the pick go, it's kind of hard to see. There's never a great way to show this. But you know, if your pick is going parallel to the strings, it's going to grab a lot. But if you tip it a little bit, and that comes through having the neck of the instrument up rather than tipping your hand in an awkward way. So your hand is pretty well flat to the floor, but then the neck of the instrument comes up and it makes the, if you're looking down, the left side of your pick goes through the pick first, goes through the string first, makes it roll off the string a little bit. And just start out nice and slow, downs and ups, stay nice and relaxed. And once you can do that, try to speed up a little bit. You're going to tense up naturally. 
don't go th too deep into the strings. You know, you don't need to be going like this. You're gonna just grab the strings a lot. So you just brushing the top. And then every time you speed up a little bit, stay at that speed, roll your shoulders, get nice and relaxed again. Once you're comfortable, speed up a little bit. Make sure your hand is nice and loose. And once you're at a, a speed that starts to sound, it won't sound like tremolo at first. You know, it just sounds like notes. But once you'll hit this point where it's like, okay, that's tremolo. And once you can do that um, comfortably and nice and relaxed, then you can start maybe moving your left hand around a little bit. A great way to also practice slides at the same time. Maybe two strings. You can work with like speeding up and slowing down your tremolo. And also the volume. here says just bought a few plectra of different thicknesses to try out what fits you the best oh that's a uh, suggestion for kumar De definitely great advice ricky good to have you here thanks for joining cherish the ladies ah, I, I can never remember how that tune goes all right rebecca from maine my old stomping ground hoping to get back to maine as soon as possible for a visit. It's been too long. Oops, I'm on the old different different camera view there. Ricky says, I've found that if I'm playing notes and want a good ending, it matches well to end with the matching two finger chord. That's definitely good too, yeah. Throw a little double stop or chord in there at the end. Any good modern bluegrass artists you can recommend to listen to? Start off with that genre. Um, that's a great, I would say right now everybody in the chat if you're into kind of the modern bluegrass thing, throw it in the chat and uh, let's give Faculty 725 some some good suggestions. I'm kind of out of touch with the modern bluegrass stuff, um, so I'm gonna pass that one on to the to the audience. Throw in your favorite modern bluegrass stuff in the chat. You'll get much more and much better answers there than from whatever I can sort of come up with in my head. Yeah, Lewis says he looked at a pava the other week with a torfied top and made it sound a little more aged. Yes, again, trying to emulate the, the sound of old wood. Oh, cool. James is going to do some luthier courses himself. Ah, have, so I was talking about straight up strings the other day. I I had one set once. I got a set just to try them. And I think I got the heavies, like I was talking about earlier, putting a 17 instead of a 16. And I really liked them. I found them a little more bluegrassy. I don't know, like punchy and a little more like powerful. Um, I like heavy strings, so it's hard to say. And it could have just been that it's so hard with strings. I really, I generally don't care what brand of strings I use. I'm much more interested in having the right string tension. So that's sort of why I was like thinking of, I like I like all the strings on the, I, I have no problem with the J75s, but I wanna try, I'm now, I'm just kind of a little obsessed with string tension at the moment. So uh, I do wanna try a heavier A and see what that's like. I'm pretty sure I tried straight up strings once, like when they first came out, which was what, like, eight years ago I don't know when when they started but uh I did try them I remember really liking them I maybe even used a couple sets and now I want to go back um but in general you know I on acoustic instruments I want phosphor browns on electric instruments with magnetic pickups I want 
uh, nickel, just because that's going to actually transfer the the electrons into the pickup. Um, but I mean, most of the strings. <laughs> this is what my string life looks like. You know those old. Remember those old vintage things called CDs that nobody has anymore. Well, I have this old CD case, and uh, this is what my life of strings looks like. It's it's storybook time. It's totally out of control. <laughs> These are all different kinds of strings, singles, sets. That's what happens when you play too many instruments. Let this be a warning to you. So that's also, if you, if you have a lot of strings, I really like this setup. I was very pleased when that idea came to me in the night. But a lot of strings, <laughs> that's just the beginning, is I just get bulk strings from this website, juststrings.com. They're out of New Hampshire. Um, and it's, they, they make their own as far as I know, or they, Get, no, I maybe mean, I don't think they make their own, but they they use I think like American made phosphor brown strings. They won't say who makes them. Um, but that's what I use. You know, I've got a lot of like weird tenor guitars and interesting instruments, and they make them all in loop end or ball end, whatever gauges you want, pretty much. Um, so that's that's my kind of go to thing. So I'm more than happy to sit down with a tension calculator and figure out what I want to use. You know, especially with like this monstrosity 24 inch scale tuned d g d a d low to high it's got courses like kind of octave Ooh, not very in tune but could be worse you got the kind of 12th string thing going on nobody makes a set of strings for this thing especially not yeah not that i know of you just kind of got to make your own um so that's what i did and I just kind of sat down with a tension calculator, aimed for like low 20 pounds per string. And there you go. Uh, yeah, so that's, you know, I like phosphor bronze on acoustic instruments. So, and I, I, um, I do want to try straight up strings again. I don't really care what the brand is as long as their quality. I've never had real... I've never tried, like, I've mostly just played D'Addario my whole life, um, but I have tried other stuff. I use, like, GHS on banjos because they have the gauges I want. I don't really care about the brand. I just want the the string tension to feel right, I guess is what I'm saying. Great questions all. I love seeing the chat keep going. And we're... Whew, all right, I got to do some lightning round here because I'm running out of the chat. Um... Just while I'm thinking of it, quick note to patrons. For anyone who supports me at $5 a month or more on Patreon, the patron-only live stream is happening tomorrow. So check Patreon for that. Um, for anyone interested, it's it's just like this, except the questions go slower so I can spend more time on them and feel a little more relaxed. But at the same time, I also I love it when the chat is going faster than I can keep up with. But right now I'm going to do a little lightning round so I don't get bogged down. We're not here for three hours. Thicker pick. What's the best setup for... I'm starting mandolin with a new instrument. Um, I really like the Kentucky KM150. Elderly has a little... Um, Elderly.com is Elderly Instruments. Um, has a great Kentucky mandolin setup that has a gig bag and some picks and a book. Um... Or I like the Eastman, like the Eastman 305. Kind of the low-end Eastmans and Kentuckys are my go-to favorites. I want an Italian mandolin. Do you think I should look online for sale or contact any builder? Like a bullback? Like this style, kind of classical bullback mandolin? Um, I would ask on Mandolin Cafe. That is the source for all good mandolin information. Um, I don't know a whole, you know, a lot of mandolins, if you just, like, buy a bullback that's 100 years old, which most of them are, they're very unplayable. They weren't really built all that strong, so the necks start coming off and all sorts of problems. They're they're more fragile than your kind of modern Gibson-style mandolin. Um, so I would ask on Mandolin Cafe a good, like, tell, tell them, you, like, what your price range is and what you're looking for in a bullback, and people will have good suggestions, I think. 
Denise, good to have you here. No problem with the with the wrong time. It's uh, a <laughs> I every time I do one of these because I'm on the West Coast and I have everything written in East Coast time, my brain is also always a mess. So join the club. <laughs> Modern bluegrass, Punch Brothers. That's yeah. That's uh, maybe even just beyond bluegrass, but um, good stuff. Sierra Hall, oh, definitely. All right, yeah, now we're into, uh, ooh, 81 Crow, also good. So yeah, now I'm into, I'm just going to probably skip over a lot of these so I can catch up with the chat, but there's a lot of good suggestions on modern bluegrass. Spotted Pony, I would love to play Spotted Pony. Thank you, Edward, for the Super Chat donation. Really appreciate it, and any way people choose to donate is greatly appreciated. Huh. Interesting. Denise says, my Kentucky came with two different but close size strings on the bass. Sounded great. That's an interesting idea. wonder if we'd run into intonation problems. Anyway, uh, I know that people do, like, kind of swap through strings to uh, get what they like. It's certainly a... Um, personal preference and take some experimentation I'll play a little spotted pony here and catch up with some of the chat um Speaking of caboose endings, there's a extra long caboose. <laughs> Spotted Pony, one of my favorites. Super energetic tune. Great contra dance tune. All right. Um, tips on playing very fast triplets. Well, it depends on what kind of triplet you mean. There's sort of the Irish or triplet ornament, which is like. like the um i would say with both of those i'm not going to go super into detail i've got lessons on web on mandolessons.com in the technique and fundamental section on on the irish triplet um and then with the the sort of the melodic triplet um, I would say just, you know, practice it. You got to get your pick direction right. Doesn't, there's no real, you just got to know what your pick is doing. You can either go down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down. Or you can go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, you got to figure out what your pick direction is doing so you're nice and solid on that. Stay nice and relaxed and you'll be in good shape. And for the Irish kind of ornament triplet, check out mandolessons.com in the technique and fundamentals section. All right, Valerie, good to have you here. First time from Florida. Do you play Dola dance? I do not know what that is, uh, so I do not, but I'll have to look into it. Summer is coming. What's your strategy for traveling with a mandolin? The nice thing about a mandolin is they're small. Um, most airlines will just let you get on with a regular size mandolin case, so that's what I do. Um, I've got 
too many mandolin cases. The, this mainly resides in a Hoffy, um, but I also have an old Calton case. I, what I do is I just buy, I keep an eye out for used, really nice cases. Like, you know, if you buy a new Calton or a new Hoffy case, they're like $1,000. Um, but you keep an eye out, and you can, if you're looking for a flight grade case, um, go used. You know, I've got, let me see if I can get this without. <laughs> this is my oldest case. It's a Calton from probably like the early 90s. Um, definitely Canadian made before they moved to Austin. Um, and I got it used like 15 years ago. Works just as good as new as far as I'm concerned. Um, they're built like a tank. This thing's been all over with me and it's got... It's got all my stickers on it. <laughs> Too many stickers. Um, yeah, that's kind of a... That's what I do is put that... I like it if it's got backpack straps so I can put it on my back if need be. All right. While I answer these last couple questions, let's get ready to play a little My Darling Asleep as a jam. And then also, just because I'm running out of time, let's pick an old-time tune to play next week. Also, next week, assuming that I can do it, yeah, it's looking good. Next week is going to be live stream number 100, which is an interesting milestone. Thank you all for uh, being here. That is maybe also a good time to give a shout out to Denise, who just got here. She has, will soon have, a hundred of these things categorized and sort of table of contented. If you go to mandolessons.com, click the live Q&A button on the left-hand side at the top. Scroll down a little bit. Um, you can find Denise keeps up these amazing Google Docs that are all linked to the tunes that I play and uh, all that sort of stuff um, topics that I cover and you can just click on the link and it brings you right to that time in the YouTube thing and Denise has done that for every one of these and all the Patreon ones incredible resource Denise you rock um, happy happy 100 I'll have to send you a, a, a hundredth episode Thank you, Gift. <laughs> uh, all right. Last couple questions, and then we'll play some My Darling Asleep. Uh, master the fretboard and play real fast. Do you have some tips? I would say jazzmando.com, uh, FFCP, four-finger closed position scales. Um, that's going to really get your fingers moving all over the fretboard. How do you preserve the life of your strings? I end up having to change them every couple weeks and it's really frustrating. Uh, the short answer is I don't really. These strings are like six months old and they're so dead and I'm always... I hate changing strings, <laughs> so I don't. <laughs> and then they just get really dull sounding. And when I get real frustrated with them, I change them. This mandolin is in bad need of a setup. Some fret work, new strings little dials. I haven't like done anything to it in like 10 years. So it's, it's time for time for a little TLC for the, the Ellis. Okay, yeah, so the group of notes. That sort of thing. You gotta stay relaxed. You gotta uh, get your pick direction in order and then just practice. Try to put them everywhere. Yep, David does, uh, David Benedict does also does a live stream on Saturdays right before mine. Uh, no, I don't mind at all. David does great stuff, and it just turns Saturdays into mandolin live stream marathons. I didn't see him this week. Um, maybe I just missed it, though. Usually I'm not caffeinated and waking up as he's doing his thing. Uh, yep, wiping the strings down can definitely help preserve your strings. I'm lazy, so I don't. Grub Springs, let's do that uh, for next week. But now we're going to play My Darling Asleep, a great Irish jig in the key of D. Think about buying a mandolin from Erlinson27. Uh, what do you recommend for a first beginner mandolin that is good but doesn't cost like $400? I would ask on Mandolin Cafe. Um, that's the website to learn about all things mandolin related, especially specifics on buying instruments. Go on their forum, sign up for a username, Ask away. Tell them what kind of music you want to play, um, what your price range is, and people will be able to help you out. 
Sukmeet says, I noticed mandolin isn't as popular as guitar. Do you think it should be popular? It does have good sounds. Yeah, I mean, guitar is the classic lush instrument for singing along with. But the nice thing is, there's lots of guitars. So if you have a mandolin, you really stand out in the crowd. Um, and I think mandolin's always becoming more popular. I don't think it'll ever be as popular as guitar, but maybe someday. If we all, if everyone here goes and tells ten friends to play mandolin, we'll be in good shape. Yeah, Grub Springs next time, assuming it's on thing here. I'm just going to check my uh, play-along thing that Denise made for me so I can see if I've done uh, play-along. Let's see. Yeah, Denise keeps up like half a dozen at this point different. Oh, we did Grub Springs episode 83. So what was the other one? Uh, Ways of the World. That's a great tune. I doubt we've done that one. Have not done that. Let's do Ways of the World next week. But now, after long last, after all that build up, it's time to play. My Darling Asleep. All right, what am I drinking? I am drinking coffee. Okay. So, My Darling Asleep, it's a jig in the key of D. Um, if you don't know the tune, see if you can just pick up a couple notes as we go. I won't be going super fast. If you do know the tune, but you're just getting used to it, great time to just loop through it a bunch and get it under your fingers. Start transitioning it into muscle memory. If you've been playing My Darling Asleep forever, see if you can add some triplets or some ornaments or various things like that. Just challenge yourself wherever you're at. That rhymed. Uh, and I'll start out by playing the melody. You play the chords. We can swap back and forth. If you want to learn this tune later, I have lessons for it at mandolessons.com and here on YouTube. We'll have a good time. If you want to change the speed, if I'm going too fast for you, or you want to speed me up and really challenge your speed, uh, once this video kind of processes through YouTube, you can always come back, hit the little gear button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, and speed me up or slow me down to fit your schedule. Alright, so my darling asleep. One, two, here we go.
all played together. Always great to jam around on a tune with you all. <laughs> Mando Barians. I like that. All right. Well, next week we'll do a little bit of Ways of the World. Great tune, a little crooked. William Stepp is the source recording for that. But there is a lesson on my website. It sounds like this. Uh... tune little crooked key of a mixolydian great tune hope you all have a great weekend patrons see you all tomorrow for another one of these you all rock thank you all for the support however it comes in whether it's paypal super chat patreon merch or just watching and enjoying and spreading the mandolin goodness get out there and play some music hope you all have a great weekend see you all soon Bye bye